Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I guess you're getting ready to enjoy a fulfilling weekend such as myself. <laughs> any rate, I decided to do a double feature tonight because I had a very interesting topic or question with another subscriber, Cruz Williams. So Cruz Williams has been working at the same shop doing oil changes, tires, alignments, etc. And it's getting a little bit dry. Uh, what do I mean by dry? He's been doing it so long for about five years now to the point where it's just kind of getting old. He wants to learn something more, wants to do more. <clears throat> Sorry. But he's not actually being tested or pushed to his limits or given other things differently, whether it's diagnostic work or additional repair practice work or what have you. Now, I don't know for sure if he works at a lube tire shop or if he works at an independent shop. Doesn't sound like he works at a dealership, but maybe he does. Look, I've been stuck down this road before. I've been stuck in this rut. I know exactly how you feel about it. When I was at the dealership the first time around, uh, I was stuck in a rut, you know, so to speak, for a handful of months. It was pretty much just oil changes, tires, alignments, maybe some brakes, nothing real major. I bought a big ass toolbox, some tools. I had a, a pretty good inventory, not to the extent that I have now, but, you know, I wasn't being pushed or tested. And, you know, I would have a fallout, would leave the industry for a little bit, only to come back to it strong, working at Chrysler. Within my first month, I went from doing tires, oil changes, and brakes to being given an engine job. Once they found out that I had a skill set doing heavy line work, they just kind of put me there and left me there. Now, every once in a while, I would say during the three years that I was at the dealership, I probably had about a half a dozen to two dozen times where I was actually tested beyond what it was that I normally did to see if I have what it took to go even further down that path, whether it was diagnostically speaking or warranty work or anything else. You know, I would do repairs, I would do heavy line, but when it came to the diag stuff, I wasn't really like pushed and I wasn't really given too many opportunities in that three year time frame. It got very frustrating for me. So I left the dealership. Now I had a good role. I didn't piss anybody off. I was doing a great job for them. They were more than happy to have me there. I was happy to be there, but something was definitely missing. So I left and I went to the independent world. I was at the independent shop for <clears throat> just under six months. And I did end up putting in a two week notice and leaving and going on to another Chrysler dealership. But the couple things that actually led up to that was like one, I was still doing the same exact stuff that I did at the dealership, but now at an independent world. It was getting frustrating to me at the time. I was getting frustrated because I didn't know how to do heavy line work on all these different year makes models and everything else. I didn't have all the specialty sockets, tools, everything else. I was still trying to build a platform and I didn't exactly have uh, the same amount of pay that I had when I left the dealership. So it was a little bit harder to buy these specialty tools for what it was that I was getting ready to do. All that frustrating stuff aside, the main th reason why I left was to learn more, to do more, to learn how to diag, to learn how to utilize a scan tool more efficiently with other vehicles, to learn how to do software programming outside of using dealership specific programming tools, to, to, just, to just learn more and do more. And I wasn't seeing that. And I didn't have the money that it took to purchase all this different stuff that I would need. So I left and I went to the Chrysler dealership again. Now, another thing that led to that was that when you leave a dealership, you have six months to go back to work for the same exact manufacturer or you lose all the certifications that were dealer specific. Um, and then you have to start all over from scratch. And I was, I was in fear. I didn't want to lose all those certifications that I had built up because I had all my level twos across the board. I had level threes in a couple of area. I was really close to being a Chrysler certified master tech outside of having my ASCs and finishing up a few other courses that I hadn't yet been given. I was really close to being a level three. And if I had my ASCs, I would be a Chrysler certified master tech. 
So I didn't want to lose that. So I was like, yeah, I, I, got, I got to get out of here. Everything in my brain told me, get out of here, get out of here, get back to the Chrysler dealership. Well, because I left on such short term notice at the dealership that I was at, I didn't feel like I was going to get my job back if I waltzed back in and said, hey, I made a mistake. Can I come back? So I chose to go to a different Chrysler dealership, which offered me a heck of a lot more than I ever could have expected. Only when I got there, the grass wasn't exactly greener, if you know what I mean. I was offered a ridiculous amount of flat rate pay and guaranteed all these hours when I got there. Not only did they not put me in the exact same strong suit that I had, so my strong suit, which was heavy line and R&R, &R, but that I wanted to learn the Diag side and drivability side, instead of putting me back into my groove of the things that I knew and slowly experimenting with me with Diag stuff and drivability stuff, they brought me on board and then immediately shoved me into interior, electrical, drivability. Uh, I had to do a whole bunch of recalls that I had never been susceptible to in the beginning. Now granted, I did some recalls, so I was familiar with like the airbags and some other things, but not nearly as many recalls as they shoved it in my face. They were getting upset because I was only able to do like one or two different cars at the same exact time. The PDIs were completely flushed out for the most part. They would give PDIs to the lube techs from the express lane. The used car department, they would give all the car, the used car stuff to the used car techs and you wouldn't get any of it. And then it would take them sometimes two hours to have a dispatcher dispatch me work. So I would show up to work at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and would stand in front of my toolbox for two hours because you weren't allowed to ask for work. You had to stand by until your appointments came in. And then at that point in time, I would get one or two cars. They would send me to lunch at my normal time, which is around 11, noon, somewhere in there. I would take off for lunch for an hour, and when I would come back after clocking off for that hour to go to lunch, they would tell me, we don't have anything else available for you for the rest of the day, feel free to go home. Oh, okay. So then I went home. So then at the end of the, the two week period, because they paid every two weeks, I was making less than $5 an hour. There was no way I could phys physically or financially keep up with this for too much longer. So within two months, I told them that I was quitting. I was leaving, I was gonna go find something else to do. They encouraged me to stay, they told me they would make it better, they would shovel me more work, they wouldn't do the things they were doing, and they would make everything right. Uh, like I said, I, I, in a past video, I made a mistake, I made a bad judgment call, a really bad judgment call, which cost me my job. And yeah, it takes a lot of guts to actually stand here and sit here in front of this camera and tell you guys that look, I had a vehicle come in, they had a complaint, um, I fucked up the new part, I tried to cover it up, and then I got fired. So after I got fired, I had to come back to the independent world, I I almost didn't even know if I even wanted to be a mechanic. I was so I was so beat up from the dealer life and what it was that had happened to me, and I started questioning myself and my integrity, and I started really second guessing everything that it was that I was doing and I started trying to think of other things I could potentially do for a career. I just didn't think there was any reason for me to even be in this industry. But I don't really have a lot of skill sets. I'm pretty skillful in general as a handyman but it's, it's really difficult when you have all your education in one platform and all your experience as far as job history is concerned in one platform. Nobody wants to hire you and because they think that you're going to end up going that way one way or another because of all the experience and time that you've spent. So quite humbly I went back to the independent shop that I was at. I explained to my uh, former boss hoping that he would be my future boss of what happened, what I did, how I was regretful of what it was that I had done, um, but how I was feeling discouraged and let down by the all the things that they they told me that I was going to get and how the grass was going to be so much greener and I was going to make, you know, 60 to 80 thousand dollars a year if I came down and they were going to give me bonus and everything else and I didn't get a bonus and I didn't get paid as well as I thought I was going to and life just sucked and I had to travel three times farther than I ever did for the independent shop. So humbly I came back to the independent shop, took a huge pay cut. Went all the way down to the bare minimum wage and then slowly worked my way up to where it was that I'm at. So 
to wrap this up, to answer Chris Williams' question about him being in his shop for five years and having problems, look, my recommendation would be talk to your boss. Pull him to the side. Let him know the things that you're interested in doing. Ask for a couple of opportunities here and there to try to prove your worth or at least experiment with you to the point where he can see what it is that you are interested in doing and maybe he can even coach and guide you along the way. But I wouldn't necessarily, and especially if this job is paying for your livelihood, your family, the roof over your head, the utilities, etc., unless you have something better already lined up, I wouldn't just quit and then start looking. I would probably spend some time on the weekend going from shop to shop and, you know, dropping my name in and filling out applications and handing in resumes because that's what you got to do before you leave a job because that's where you're getting paid if you're that fed up with it and you want to jump ship. But from a personal standpoint, I could tell you, man, it is just not worth it. The, the grass is not always greener. Now, I don't know your situation. I understand that you've been there for five years and you know what? Maybe it is about time for you to have a change. Maybe that life change will help you and make you a better mechanic as a whole or a technician as a whole. I can't speak for you, your family, and what it is that you have going on because at the end of the day, you're your own man. You have to make your own decisions. I'm just letting you know that, look, I've been there, I've done that, and uh, the grass ain't always greener, man. That's, that's just the fact of life. Maybe you, Maybe when you leave, you don't regret it and you get the best job you've ever had and you couldn't be happier and you stay there for a career. <clears throat> Maybe it becomes the worst mistake you ever made. Who's to know? I'll tell you this much though, I'm quite humbled by the job that I have. I'm very thankful for the people that I work with. Uh, they're like family to me. You know, they've treated me well. They understand that the mistakes happen. Um, and I don't feel that that fear factor, you know what I'm talking about, when something bad happens and you have to go explain it to somebody. I don't have that fear factor anymore working where I work. If something broke, I can simply walk up and say, hey, it broke, I'm sorry, what can we do to fix it? Or do we have to buy a replacement part? Again, I didn't mean to, I tried to be as gentle as I could. The other side of that is like, if I get to a point where I feel like it's gonna break, I stop and I say, hey, look, this is where I'm at. It feels like something bad's about to happen since you're the shop owner and this is your money that's gonna be spent. Could you please take a look at it and if it breaks, at least I know that you broke it and I don't feel as bad. So <laughs> that's all I got for this video. Thanks as always for watching. Cruz, I hope it helped you out. Thanks as always for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Doses.